Hey what's up guys and welcome to my review of the Orient Phone N3. I've been using this phone now for one week and I have to say it's really awesome. Before I've used my real Samsung Galaxy S4 and this octa-core phone is as fast as my real S4 and has an amazing display. So in this video I want to show you all features of the phone and as always the link to the sellers in the description so be sure to check it out. And now let's start with the review. Okay, so as I said, this is the phone with the S view cover and I'm using this now for a little bit more than one week and there is no damage on the phone, so I've dropped it now two times and the only thing which went off was the logo here on the back, so there was a orange phone logo, but it was just some kind of a sticker and I pulled this one off because I don't like um, logos on the back side. Okay, then let me show you the SVU cover and as you can see this is working pretty well, also if you close it very fast or very slow, this works all the time. And also here in the window you can unlock your phone and then you can access the camera, you can access the calendar, you can also listen to music. We have here a mp3 player feature as you can see. And what I really like is the camera feature because you can take photos with the phone and you don't have to open up the SVU cover so you see a little preview in the little window. Okay then let's go to the main menu of the phone and let's swipe here through the pages. And as you can see, I've installed a shitload of apps, so I've tested out every feature on the phone to give you a really good overview over the phone. And let's swipe you through the pages. So this is Android 4.2.2 and you can swipe you through the pages without any lag. And if you want to, you can also change the wallpaper for home screen, lock screen or both. We have here different wallpapers or you can also set your own picture from the gallery. And before we take a look at all those apps here, let's take a look at the Android status bar, which we have here on the top. So let's swipe here from the top to the bottom, and this opens up the Android status bar. Here it says slot 1, no SIM card, because this is a dual SIM phone, and I've only installed one SIM card. Then here we have the battery status, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, we have GPS, we have data connection, data usage, audio profiles, brightness, display timeout, auto rotation and wireless display. Okay, then let's go to the settings of the phone and let's take a look at all the settings. Here at the top we have wireless and networks. So we have SIM management, you can set your default SIM card because this is a dual SIM phone. We also have your Wi-Fi so you can connect to a Wi-Fi network. Let's see if it can find my home network. Okay, somehow it only finds the network of my neighbor and it's more far away than my own network. I don't know why, but I think that's just the issue with my network. Then let's go back. Further we have Bluetooth, so you can connect Bluetooth accessories like a Bluetooth speaker or you can send data to any other device via Bluetooth. We also have gesture sensing which works in the gallery, in the music player, in the camera and in the launcher. I will later show you this. And that was everything gesture sensing and it's now enabled and let's go back. Further we have flash alert, so if you enable this the flash flashes if you get MMS or incoming calls. Then further we have data usage which shows your current data usage which is very useful if you have limited data. We also have airplane mode, VPN, tethering and portable hotspots, mobile networks and we also have USB internet. This is very useful if you want to share your internet connection with a notebook. Then further we have device settings where we have audio profiles, so you can set different audio profiles like on any other Android phone. Also you have display settings, so here you can set wireless display. Also we have sensor settings right over here where you can recalibrate your Qi sensor. And we also have some S-View settings like the S-View window color, the S-View window sleep, and you can also increase the S-View touch sensitivity, which can be very useful if it's hard to control the um, S-View cover. And it's also nice to change the S view window color from time to time because sometimes this gets boring. Okay, let's save that and let's go back. Further we have storage, so let's take a look at that. And the phone should have 16 gigabytes of internal storage. And we have those 16 gigabytes on two partitions. So partition one um, has about four gigabytes and partition two has about 10 gigabytes. But also the ROM takes some place, so expect to have about 13 gigabytes of free space. And if that is not enough, you can extend your internal storage by using a SD card. And this phone supports SD cards up to 64 gigabytes. Further, we have battery stats, so let's take a look at that. And here we can enable CPU power saving mode, so this shuts off a few cores. And here we can see that the phone is for 6.5 hours on battery and it has 70% left, so really great. 
then let's take a look at the apps. So those are the apps I have downloaded. We can also see the running apps which are currently running in the background. Okay, so this is loading. And here we can see all apps which are on the phone. So there are no Chinese apps here on the phone. I only found two Chinese apps which were on the phone. So let me swipe here to the end. And it was branding provider and um, this other random Chinese app, but I have disabled them. Maybe if someone knows Chinese, maybe he could explain what those apps do. Then further we have um, location assets, so GPS is working on this device, but you have to do the GPS fix, as you will see later. We also have security settings, and here you can set um, a different screen lock, you can encrypt your phone, you can also enable unknown sources, which is really important if you want to install APK files. Further we have backup and reset, so you can backup your phone, and you can also backup it with your Google account and reset it. We also have your different accounts which you can add like email, Google, WhatsApp, Facebook, anything you want to. Then here we have date and time and I have had no problem with automatic date and time. Then further we have scheduled power on and off and accessibility. So here you can improve the accessibility of your phone if you need to do that. Then further we have develop options which are really important because here you can enable USB debugging. And this is important if you want to back up the ROM of your phone or if you want to flash a new ROM. Also we have all the other dev options. And last but not least we have about the phone. And currently this phone is running on Android 4.2.2 which is the latest version right now for the phone because it's the most stable one. But Android 4.3 and KitKat are coming. Okay so that were the settings and now let's take a look at the apps which are on the phone. But before we do that I want to show you gesture sensing. And as you can see, if you do this here high up in the air, about 5 cm over the proximity sensor, it is not working. It's only working about 2 cm over the proximity sensor. So um, this really needs calibration or the sensor is not working really well. You have to be very near at the proximity sensor. Okay, then let's take a look at the menu. And here you can see all the apps which I've installed. So I've installed a real shitload of apps. Then further we have your widgets, which you can place on your home screen, just like on any other Android device, there are no restrictions. Then now let's go through the basic apps which are on the phone, like the telephone app, messaging app and all that stuff. So therefore we go back to the home screen and then let's take a look at the phone app, which you can find right over here. So let's enter it. Then here in the phone app you can dial any number you want to, just like on any other Android phone. But you can choose if you want to do the call with SIM card 2 or SIM card 1. And this is really amazing if you have a business number and a private number or if you have two contracts for instance for internet and one for calls. Here we have the call log and here you can also see my contacts. And you can import or export contacts to or from any account you want to, for instance Google account or exchange account. Then let's take a look at the browser and the only thing you have to change is your um, Google search engine. So you have to set it to the country you're living. And now let's go to YouTube and let's take a look at one full HD movie and let's check out the movie playback. So let's search for full HD movie. And there we go. And I'm currently not in Wi-Fi so this is using the internet connection from the phone. Then now let's take this movie here. Let's do full screen and high quality. Okay, high quality, and there we go, let's play with it. So as you've seen the movie playback is really smooth and not laggy and also the viewing angle on this phone looks amazing because it's using an IPS display. Then here we can see the message app so you can use um, this keyboard to type but you can also use any keyboard you want to and you can set it to your language so this does not come in Chinese or something. Don't worry about that. Then let's take a look at the contacts as we've seen before in the phone app. So here we can see the contacts app and as I said you can import or export your contacts. Okay, so that were the communication apps and now let's take a look at the Play Store. So as I said, this phone is using Android, that means it has a full Google Play Store, not a Chinese Play Store and you can install any app you want to. On some cheap China phones you get um, this phone is not or this app is not compatible with this phone and that really sucks. 
but on this phone you can install any app you want to, so I'm installing now one of my favorite games which is Smash Hit and it's downloading the app and it does not say um, incompatible phone or something because it's a full Android phone, it's running 4.2.2 and there are no restrictions here in the Google Play Store. So it's now downloading and installing the app and now let's close the Play Store and let's take a look at the next step which is the music player. So you can also use the phone to listen to music and this is the normal Android music player like you have for instance on the Real S4 so there is no difference and if you want to you can also install a other music player. Then let's take a look at the camera app and the camera on this phone is not the best but it's way better than on many Chinese phones which I have seen before. And the back camera should have 13 megapixels and the front camera should have amazing 5 megapixels. But now let's see how good it is really. So here we can also take videos with the back camera in full HD. Then the camera mode has different modes. So we have HDR mode, panorama mode. So currently it's HDR capturing. So now let's take a photo. And as you can see, this is the quality of the camera. It's not the best, but it's still pretty good. We also have here live photo mode, face beauty mode, and here at the bottom we have panorama mode. You will later also see an outdoor test with the camera, but now let's take a look at the settings. So we have GPS location info, we have things like white balance and anti-flickering. Here we have camera settings, so in different modes you can set the picture quality and size, also the ISO mode. Then at video capturing you can also set the quality and stuff for instance like microphone if you want to record audio and all that stuff. But now let's go outside and let's test the camera. So it's a really beautiful day and I have found two ducks which are having a good time here at my pond in the garden and now let's try to get a few pictures of them. I'm not sure if you can see this very well because it's very bright right now but let's try if it works. Okay so you can barely see something but it's okay. Then we have here a tap autofocus and it's not very fast but it's working pretty well. And let's take a few photos here of the ducks. And as you can see this is also working pretty well. If you want to take faster photos you can also um, disable the shutter delay. And the image quality is now set to best. If you want to I could also upload some test photos. Then further we have panorama mode where we can adjust some other settings. You cannot adjust all the settings in different modes so this is really weird I don't know why. And to capture a panorama photo you have to move your device like this and it also shows the progress on the screen but I'm not using this anyway. Further we have live photo mode and it takes really long to save because it's basically converting the photo in some kind of a video like a gif or something really funny but I'm also not using that and um, here at the top we have HDR mode so you can capture HDR photos if you want to not really good quality I mean um, I'm using my DSLR when I take HDR photos or something so I would not use my phone but to take snapshots if you don't have your camera with you it's okay you can also see now here the pictures here in the gallery and as you can see they don't look that bad Okay, so that was the back camera and now let's go back to the phone and let's check out the front camera. Okay, so back on the phone, here we have the front camera which has 5 megapixels and I have to say pretty good quality for Skype and video calls, pretty amazing. Um, the front cameras on most China phones are bad, but on this one the front camera is really good. Then now let's take a look at the next step which is the King user app. So this phone does not come pre-rooted, so you have to root it on your own, but it's so easy. You have to connect it to your computer, start your aim, hit the root button and it's rooted without a problem. So rooting this phone is really easy and you can do this without a problem. Okay, then let's take a look at the next apps. We have a calculator app, calendar, backup and restore. We also have the clean master app which I want to show you. I have installed this because I have noticed that this phone has a really high memory usage. I have installed now many apps and also some are running in the background but 87% of the RAM is used right now. So this is really much if you think about that the phone has 2 GB of RAM. You can free the RAM and then you get to 50 or 60% in idle mode so with no apps in the background. And this is really much so this ROM has a really high RAM consumption. Maybe with a custom ROM this will get better but let's see. Further we have a clock so you can use your phone as an alarm clock as every phone. I also tried to install Cyanogen mod but currently this phone is not supported. Maybe there will be a custom ROM or something or a user port but let's see. Further we have some other things like faster GPS so you have to do the GPS fix on the phone otherwise it's not working. Let's also test the flashlight of the phone. 
and the flash is not that bright like for instance on my S4, but it's much better than on other phones like the Goo phone iFFS. I mean, on that phone the flash was just a fucking joke, on this phone it's much better. You can also use it as a flashlight in the dark without a problem and you can also take quite good photos at night. So here you can see the flash when the light is off and it's not that bright so that you say, oh what the fuck it's hurting my eyes, but um, it's okay to take quite good photos at night. Okay, so that was the flashlight app, then further we have FM radio, but you have to use your headset because this works as an antenna. We have gallery so you can watch videos and photos, we have Google Mail to check your mail, Google and Google settings, then there are some apps which I have installed, and we also have local and maps. And as you can see, I'm now connected to the internet and maps is working, so this is the normal Google Android maps and not a Chinese one. You can also use your location, but this does not work here in my studio, so we have to go outside. And now let's go outside and let's see how fast it can find a fix. So we're now here outside and let's test the GPS. So therefore we enter engineering mode MTK. Then here we go to location based services and at location based services we enter YGPS. Oh my god that autofocus sucks. Okay so now it's working. Let's give it a few seconds and let's see if it can find a fix. Okay four satellites, one more. And GPS fix found after about 10 seconds. So as you can see, GPS is working outside. Also, it gets a few more satellites and the GPS is really good on this device. Maybe because it really has one antenna for GPS only. Okay, so that was the GPS and we also have your navigation on the phone and it works perfectly in the car, so no connection loss. And the GPS overall is really good on this phone. But we also have some other stuff like sound recorder and voice search. Also WhatsApp is working on this device without a problem. Okay, so now we went through some basic apps on this phone and now we will see some benchmarks to see how good the performance of the phone is. And afterwards you will hear my conclusion about the phone, so enjoy.
We are now at the end of this review and here comes my conclusion. It's hard to find anything negative on this phone since the overall performance is great. It may could have a better camera and maybe a S Pen, but that depends on your likes. Also currently it's only on 4.2.2 and the RAM usage is high, but except of this it's an amazing phone which I have traded in for my real Samsung Galaxy S4. The seller is orientdeal.com, you can find the link in the description so be sure to check it out. I would rate this phone with 9 out of 10 points by just taking 1 point for the outdated ROM. Ok guys, so I hope you enjoyed this review and if you have any questions just feel free to ask and leave a comment here under this video and I will try to reply as soon as possible. If you want to, also visit chinadevices.com, post a new thread, ask something, I will try to answer it as fast as I can. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I hope we see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.